ozone cleaner follow-up. I take on your hate. Like he left, he sucks. I hate his videos. He's got a hairy back. It also goes down to his crack. There's also one thing that I think you should know. His dad is not even a subscriber. Hey guys, just put out that ozone cleaner video the other day. Uh, wow, that ticked people off. Let me show you exactly what I mean. On my website, I can go in here and I can look at some, I can look at analytics, but look at this. Look at all these comments. I have a ton of comments. This is great, but check out this. I look at the like and dislike ratio, tons of likes. I have eight people, eight people that are passionate enough to say, Jason, I don't like this video. In fact, I hate this video. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. I'm gonna to respond to the hate, more like the criticism. The people that had something to say about this video, they didn't like something about it. I'm gonna respond directly to them. But first, please check out the description box below for some really, really easy ways that you can help support this channel. Anything you do to support this channel by liking, sharing, subscribing, or checking out one of these links, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Look, we know my father is already not a subscriber of this channel. And recently I also saw my mother and when I was at their house, she was trying to give me this iced tea. She was like, here, take the box. No, take more, take more. And I'm like, mom, you are so kind. And then as I come to find out, she gave me this stuff because she hates it and she doesn't want it in her house and she'd rather me soil my internals. So I'm gonna take a little drink of the hate, get ready for it and see if it actually is bad. That is some terrible iced tea. Yeah. Mom? <sighs> yeah. Now if we go ahead and check out the comments, we can see that some people get it. Look at here. Jess, Jess gets it. Jess gets that the strawberry plants were there for your enjoyment. Strawberry plants tend to take the edge off. I tried to do that here. Jess gets it. Eight thumbs down. Let's look at the thumbs down. All right, String says, you don't put the whole unit in the ozone cleaner. Just the tubing mask and water tray. Now String is all pissed off because I had this machine in this bin. String's like, nah, dude, you did it wrong. Now, thankfully for me, I have Sabrethius here who is absolutely protecting my honor. He's like, dude, it pumps it back in there anyway. So basically, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the the so Clean is designed, they have tubings that go into them. Uh, all the other ozone cleaners, the Motif, uh, the, the Virtue Clean, they all take it and they pump the ozone into the actual machine. So whether you're marinating in it for a half hour, internally and externally, it's all the same. You're gonna have ozone all over the place. One down. Now next we have MG Video. Now I've actually spoken with MG Video on the phone. He's in this state of, he kind of hates me, but yet he also kind of likes me because he knows I'm okay on the phone and talking to him, but yet he really hates me and hates my videos. But he's kind of, he's in that conflicted state. So we have to give him that. So he says, read this after your anger management class. Look here. It's a session, it's not a class. You say that ozone and ultraviolet cleaners don't clean the mask well enough because the grease and oil from your face. Fair enough, fair enough. But my face doesn't touch the inside air tube or the water chamber. It also doesn't touch the inside of the elbow that connects air tube to the mask. And my face doesn't touch the deeper area of the full face mask that get daily beads of moisture, I'm assuming from the humidifier. Seems to me that all these places are potential breeding grounds for bad stuff that my UV light machine says it will kill. Okay, you can smack me now, but I don't know why you'd want to. The answer is always for the views. I smack you for the views. Those are all fair points. Uh, yeah, you can kill stuff a lot of ways, but some ways are better than others. If you have a UV light machine, look, I have a free UV light machine. If you want a UV light machine, I got one for free. Uh, UV light machines are kind of dumb. There's also a bunch of warnings that they can burn you, uh, burn you. FDA doesn't like them. I'm by no means some kind of defender of the FDA. They do a lot of dumb stuff. There's a lot of problems with UV, UV light and introducing it to that. Plus you got it free outside. So let's address the beads of moisture. Uh, beads of moisture, I would just use a hurricane dryer. Hurricane dryer is super simple. You throw the mask in there. You throw the humidifier chamber in there when you're done with it, empty it out. Hurricane dryer is gonna dry it all, doesn't have to touch it. You dry out all those beads of moisture in the elbow, all the hard to reach places inside of your tubing. You're not gonna grow mildew. You're not gonna grow fungus. Nice thing about the hurricane dryer is if you're comparing it to something like an ozone cleaner or any of those UV light cleaners, those are cheaper though. Uh, but especially the SoClean, SoClean's like 200 plus bucks. 
So if you just get a Hurricane dryer, it's like 150 bucks. To me, it's far more effective. And you're gonna be doing that surface level cleaning anyway, because I mean, UV light's not gonna get off the dirt, oils, grease, grime, and stuff that you come off of your face. So that said, you're, you're gonna be doing some kind of a cleaning anyway. Then you need to dry it quickly, Hurricane dryer. Done. That's two done. All right, next we have Al Eddy. He is very mad. He uses poo poo language, so I'm gonna clean it up. Bull poo poo. I've been using an ozone cleaner with my air sense 10 and F20 mask with foam cushion and never, never had any issues. Al Eddy is a subscriber, so I apologize for that snickering and bad voice. So he's using a, what what is a logical fallacy, and I can't remember, uh, but he's using, doing that thing where just because it's never happened to him means it's never happened. I've never had cancer, so can I say that cancer doesn't exist? Of course not. So because he, I mean, I don't know what to say about that. You've been using an ozone cleaner with that and you've never had any problems. Cool. In my test, bad stuff happened. And a lot of people in the thread, a lot of people that have a lot of support, they're like, yeah, you're right. This has dicked up my machine. I stopped using it and I stopped having problems. I clean it this way without ozone and it works great. I don't know what to tell you. I did the test. I did it as controlled as I could. I got a result out of it. You've been using it a long time and haven't had that same thing. Awesome. That's great. Three down. Now, next we have Phil Young, also a subscriber. He kind of came at me. He came at me in the right way. I, I love it. I really actually love dialogue that gets people talking. I don't care that you agree with me, but... As we can see in here, there's one person in here I'm going to dub the PP tickler of the day because he is he is a bona fide dick. Phil is not that guy. Phil's awesome. He has some some concerns, as most of these people do. They're just concerns and they need to be addressed. And I'm, I'm so happy to do that. All right. So Phil said, you left these items in a box for 30 days at 24 hours a day for roughly, he did some, he did some deep math here, 720 plus hours of soaking in the ozone. Assuming that someone does use ozone machine every day twice a day to approximate one hour of use, then it would take almost two years to get to the yellowing. No. However, by that time, most would have replaced the items likely a couple times in the same period. And then there's the whole variable that most people don't use the ozone machine daily, but more likely one or two times per week. This is an unrealistic use case. To that I answer, this is a video from so clean. If we scroll down, I have it queued up to a part that says oh, that daily maintenance is critical. In fact, sleep equipment manufacturers recommend that you wash certain parts of it every day. That's why millions of people have turned to so clean as a part of their daily routine. So clean is the smart, easy way to keep your sleep equipment fresh without the need for disassembly. Just place your equipment in and close the lid. That's it. So straight off the SoClean website, they are advertising that it is a daily cleaner. So I did it daily. Okay, Dustin Z came to my defense. God bless you, Dustin Z. Also a subscriber, thank you. He says, he's like, dude, he didn't leave it running in for 24 hours a day. He cycled it on once per day. So one of the things I argued back is basically it's in a non-airtight box. Um, because most people, when they, I think I mentioned this in the video, they're not airtight. So you turn them on and ozone inundates them does its thing and then it breaks up. And I didn't mention this in the video, but ozone only has a life of about 30 minutes, sometimes up to an hour before it just breaks up on its own. So really anytime the machine is on, it's gonna be active. And then once it stops, just like in a so clean machine or in one of these bags that the manufacturers provide, they're not airtight. Plus it's gonna dissipate and just turn back into oxygen or you know whatever anyway. So it's not really an issue. Even if it wasn't an airtight box, it's gonna break up into something else. So at most it's soaking in there for 30 minutes or however long the machine is active. So, so really it is actually a very good real world example of using it. So to Phil, I actually wrote this to Phil. Uh, Phil, this was a trial to see what effect ozone has on equipment. I need to control for variables. So I left the control in identical boxes with just ozone as the variable. Because he was saying, you didn't have people use it. You weren't wearing it. If you're not wearing it, how do you know? Because if I use them, I have to use all the masks and all the equipment the exact same way every night on the exact same face under the exact same conditions. Obviously, I can't do that. I only have one face. So I'm like, Phil, this is a trial to see the effect that ozone has on equipment. I need to control for variables. So I left the control in identical boxes with just ozone as the variable. By your original post, it seems like you're suggesting there is also only ozone on the equipment for 45 days straight. The life cycle of ozone is about 30 minutes at most. Is that the part that you're focusing on? Also from your original post, I understand most people d don't use ozone daily, but some do. I could have turned it on once a week, 
for 52 weeks, but then I'd have a video in a year. That ain't gonna happen. Uh, SoClean advertises it as a daily cleaner in their ads. This is why I used it daily for 45 days. I felt like it was a, it's a good, that's why I said what I did. If you wanna redo the test, you can redo it however you want. I just like to tell people what I did. You can change it up if you don't think it was fair. And next up we have Les Hartman. Oh, Les. Les is not a subscriber, so I'm gonna talk some major. Oh, so I have two ozone machines, one at home and one at my shore house. Sorry, I don't have a monocle to put in. My biggest problem cleaning my equipment the traditional way was getting the water out so I didn't feel like I was drowning at night. The hurricane dryer is so big it would essentially be out all the time if I cleaned my equipment daily. This experiment upsets me. Obviously, I do not want to damage my equipment. The other thing that I'm hearing is that ozone may be harmful. Any insight in that regard? Yes, ozone is harmful. I don't know what he means by cleaning equipment the traditional way, but um, I think he has Jeeves do it at the shore house. Yeah, ozone's harmful. Uh, there's a lot of data that if it gets, uh, if you breathe it in, it's really harmful to you. It's a high oxidizing agent. So yeah, very bad. I have some respiratory therapists come here. Now Sherry Akers pops in on this thread. Sherry Akers is an MD and basically she says, Hey, I'm a doctor. I talk to my pulmonologist about this stuff all the time. It's really long. This is like a too long didn't read, like really long. She's like, bottom line, uh, the ozone machine that I use sanitizes and reduces the number of bacteria, viruses, and fungi. Boom, that's what Sherry says. And some dude after is like, he says agree. He's like, truth. Here's my question. Where is all this bacteria? Where is all the viruses? And where's all this fungi coming from? Where the hell is it coming from? You have a machine. You have your mask, where's the bacteria coming from? Bacteria, I know, bacteria is coming from your face. So why clean the mask that has the same bacteria on your face? You're gonna put the mask on, same bacteria is gonna get on. I don't get that. Where's the viruses coming from? Virus doesn't just float around the air. Well, technically it does. But virus doesn't just come into your room and go into your CPAP machine unless it's on you and you're like exhaling in the intake. The other thing, so virus, I don't, I'm not understanding the bacteria. I'm not understanding the viruses. And I'm certainly not really getting the fungus, the mold, and the mildew. Uh, I understand with, with one exception. When you're using it, you're gonna get the beads that we've already discussed with MG video. You're gonna get the beads of moisture in the tubing, the humidifier chamber, etc. If you follow the simple procedure that I've outlined in a previous video of how I clean my CPAP machine, when you're done using CPAP, pull the humidifier out. It's got a bunch of water in there. That, if you leave the water in there, is introducing moisture inside of a closed, dark environment, and that water has been warmed. There's your fungus mold and mildew. Pull that chamber out, dump the water, dry it somehow. I suggest a hurricane dryer. Same with the tubing, it's got little beads of water in it. But plug it into the hurricane dryer. Your mask that has stuff on it, you wanna rinse it out, plug it in, put it in the, humid, the, the hurricane dryer, all this stuff's gonna be bone dry. I don't see where molds, mildews, fungus, all that stuff, I don't see where it comes from. If, if you take care of your equipment in the proper way, and that's pulling that crap out and drying it. You gotta dry it. If you don't dry it, you're gonna get mold and mildew. Where do mold and mildew come from? Uh, wet stuff. If you dry your stuff, where's the wet stuff? That's my, I don't, I don't understand. I'm, I don't understand. I can see why people hate me because I start becoming an ass. I even think in a later thread, this guy, Les, he, he mentions like, dude, if I got a hurricane dryer, that sucker's too big. It's hella big but yet he uses an, a, a so clean. The so clean is kind of big. It's it's probably about like, it's probably like 75% the size of a hurricane dryer. So I'm, I'm not getting it. He's like, dude, I'd have to leave it out all the time. Uh, at the shore house, I hear there's a lot of space. <laughs> Next up, we have Gary Stratter. And Gary Strater says, uh, please note that I did like this video. However, I think your premise is a bit skewed. What does he know? Before you say, what does he know? I will say that, I do not use an ozone to clean mask. However, I will give you my entire cleaning regimen regimen, and the reasoning behind this. Basically what he, Gary goes on to say, this is a too long didn't read, is uh, when, he didn't, when he didn't clean it, he gets this smell that's something like burnt wiring and rancid meat. So Gary basically goes on to say that with all this rancid meat and electrical wiring burning, once he started using ozone on some of his components, that smell totally went away. Another person hops in here and says, uh, I only get that smell when my humidifier runs out of water. <laughs> I have heard that before. Usually it does seem like that's when the, the uh, humidifier runs out of water, you start getting that burnt smell. But again, we go back to, he's talking about molds and mildews inside of the machine. 
I'm saying pull all that stuff out, blow hot air through your machine when you're done with it in the morning. That's gonna dry out everything in there. I would do that well before I did any so clean or 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 even introduced any ozone into my machine. All right, next next up we have Zarmo P Fud Pucker. Zarmo's hella angry. He's like, this pisses me off. I bought one of these ozone cleaners based on one of your videos. And now you tell me that it's a waste of money? What? What? Now I don't know what to trust. Also, what the heck does it matter if the mask turns yellow? What does the color have to do with it working properly? So what he's referring to is I did a Motif video, a video of the Motif cleaner. It was a sponsored video. And I told them when I did the sponsored video, I said, I don't like ozone cleaners at all, but I'm gonna be completely honest about it. That's exactly what I said. And what I said in this video is that I hate ozone cleaners. I don't like them at all. I think they suck. I think they're stupid. But if you are dead set, you're like, I'm gonna get me an ozone cleaner. I said, if you're still gonna get one, despite me saying they suck and they're gonna destroy your equipment and I hate them, if you're still gonna do it, get the Motif because it's way cheaper than all the others. It was like 50 bucks or something. And I stand by that. If you're gonna get an ozone cleaner, I think it's a total waste. I think it's uh, preying on your fears of this all this boogeyman virus, bacteria, and fungus mold and mildew that pop up in your machine. That mold and mildew, sure, can happen, but totally can be fixed another way by just drying your stuff out. But if you're gonna get one, the motif is really cheap and I have a coupon code. That was a video, but he took it as like, go out and buy it. That's not what I said. So then he's like, oh, my bad which, you know, that happens. I'm gonna take another drink of this nasty tea. Oof, God, that is bad. Ugh, Jesus, like brown dishwater. Ugh, thanks, Mom. Next up, we have JJ. All right, JJ's like, I would love to see a comparison with a non-nasal mask that doesn't use the cheaper air tubing head strap. The nasal part of the video that did not turn yellow this is not a good test on the product. Also, hospitals use this to sanitize stuff. Like others who have commented, the ozone cleaner alone is not enough, and I use dish soap to get the gunk out. The so clean kills bacteria you can't reach in the machine with soap and water. This is the first video I am put off by this channel, which really cracks me up because I'm like, oh, like, why are you put off? And he goes, oh, I'm not put off at all. What you're talking about? I'm not put off. So I don't get it. If I have poo on my hand, I'm not gonna take an ozone cleaner and go like that and hope that the poo disappears. I'm gonna wash my hands because it gets rid of all the grease, the oils, mold, mildew, fungus, big fat chungus, gets everything off. Now I don't have to use the ozone machine. I just did soap and water or mask bright and it's all off. It's done, it's, it's one and done. I don't have to do all of this and then gas the hell out of it. I don't understand this. I don't get it. I never will. Oh, gross. Well, uh, oh, lad, little poo on your finger? Ah, uh, yeah, that's poo. God dang it. I got poo on my hand again. Well, do you have some soap and water? I don't have soap and water. Well, that's a bummer. But thank God I have an ozone machine. Oh, that might work. Oh, uh, yeah. Looks good. Give it a try. Thanks, ozone cleaners. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. So, on another note, He's saying, do some more masks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat this test with a different variety of masks, see if I can get a different result or if it's the same result, but do the same thing, same bins, pump a bunch of gas in for about the same amount of time, see what happens. Use a different different smattering of masks. He specifically requests the F30. F30's getting gassed. Boom, it's happening. Then I'll put some others in there. Next up, we have Zammer8. Zammer8 is the pickle tickler of the day. He is just a really special guy. He is a straight up butthole and he amuses me. And I definitely had fun with him. You omitted the very important fact that ResMed states for its CPAP purchase after March, 2020, I may have got the month wrong. Use of ozone cleaner invalidates the warranty. Through my ResMed predated that, I stopped using the so clean for which evidence of effectiveness has always been questionable. So he basically agrees with me, right? At this point he agrees with me, but he's like, you didn't mention this important fact. And I'm like, oh no, no, I do mention that it does void warranties. Then he says, at what number of the video do you say? I can't find it. It seems important enough to be at the beginning. And I said, and he's like, are you still looking for that yet? And I'm like, oh yeah, it's at 1240. Voiding, because I had to say, oh yeah, and it voids warranties. 
that's not enough for him. He wants specific dates. In 1814-92, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. In 1814-52, Zemma woke up. And in his pants, he did poo. So I'm basically like, do, uh, yeah, voting of warranties isn't really the topic of this video. So I don't really think it's important to say at the beginning or really anywhere. Because this is just, how does the ozone affect it? That's all I'm trying to do here. I'm not trying to put in random dates. Then he's like, you did not say at the beginning or anywhere that using ozone machines on ResMed CPAPs voids the warranty effective about a year ago. Ozone machines were the topic of the video, and that is vital information, at least as important as anything you said. Let's drop it. You don't even know. <laughs> you don't even know what you say. So pretty much the machines I used in the video were not ResMed anyway. They were Philips Respironics. Anyway, he goes on to insult the fisheye camera that I use, saying it's stupid. I'm stupid. He doesn't even subscribe. He even goes on to say he canceled his subscription to my videos, as if I'm People Magazine. <laughs> he is a really mad dude. He is pissed. <laughs> and it makes me really happy because dude is unhinged. Xamar8, you have earned the, the Pickle Tickler of the Day award. Congratulations. And I'm going to put a fisheye on right now for you. All right, guys, this is the last screen I want to show. Uh, this video has, at this point, as I'm filming this, 5,307 views since it was published. By far, that was awesome. I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, the 13 subscribers that added on, really appreci appreciate that. And then there were like 600 likes on the video. I really appreciate that. that. And I also really appreciate the respectful discussion in the comment section. I think that's great. I think uh, people talking about this stuff is fantastic. I really appreciate you guys watching and discussing this stuff. Uh, I think the more we discuss things, the more open discussion there is, the more people can talk about their experience with it. And uh, look, if ozone is not a good thing, I, I, would, I certainly wanna know about it because a lot of people are buying this stuff. There's plenty of advertisements out there. You look up a lot of so clean things, a lot of advertisements, you know, I've hammered the air ring and I'm, I still continue to do so. It's a scam. There's a lot of stuff I don't like and there's a lot of misinformation out there. Some of this misinformation is coming from the manufacturers purposefully. Other times um, it's not intentional, but like people just say stuff and it just gets out there. And look, I consider this my job to try to at least give you my point of view from things, maybe another point of view. Whether you agree with it or not, you don't have to. But hey, let's have an honest discussion about this stuff. Um, and if you don't agree with me, I really don't care. I, I think that's that's cool. And if we can keep having this open dialogue, I think it would be great for the CPAP community in general. Now, I had a guy on another video. It happened to be the airing video, which is why I mention it. The dude popped off. He was like, he's like, man, you're, you're working in CPAP, so of course you don't like anything that's not CPAP. So in that case, he doesn't understand airing is basically supposed to be CPAP, but it's just not plugged in. I don't care what the treatment is. Uh, the treatment is 100% irrelevant to me. I don't care. Because look, so I might be advertising for a CPAP company, a DME right now, but guess what happens? If, if there's another treatment for sleep apnea, are you telling me there's not gonna be a change in what companies do? A company sells CPAP equipment, now there's a, a different alternative to treating sleep apnea? You're telling me those people are gonna continue selling CPAP machines, or do you think they're going to evolve and change to this other thing that is now the better treatment for it? Dude, they're in it for the money. They're gonna change to the better option. I'm in the same boat. I'm not like in love with CPAP by any stretch. I use it because it's the most effective thing out there right now. And I am happy to try anything else if people say it's a better option. With a few exceptions, anything that's surgical in nature, I'm, I'm pretty much gonna try to stay away from for the most part. But there's other devices that are already kind of on my radar, radar as treatments. I wanna try a sample first, but I can tell you right now, the premise of them doesn't make sense to me. I wanna take this time to say, please check the description box below for ways that you can help support this channel. Among them, we have, you can just use my services, axgsleepdiagnostics.com. If you're having a hard time getting used to CPAP or bi-level, and it's just not working like you think it should, let's do a one-on-one -on -one session through Zoom, go through your data, talk to you. I'm not trying to brag, but now's the point to do that. Uh, there's been a lot of people who have had really amazing success stories in using this service. Uh, they went from, I want to quit, this is terrible, I hate my life, to, oh my God, I have so much joy again, I can get back to my hobbies. Uh, I'm enjoying life again. Thank you so much for helping me walk, you know, walking me through this. Uh, just had a beautiful letter written to me today. Tons of people have offered to do testimonials. Um, I just never take them up on it. 
So if you have a testimonial, if you've done an AXG sleep diagnostics, pap therapy analysis with me, or even a phone conversation, and you loved it or hated it, let me know in here. Right now, there's one guy, I'll tell you, he hated it. He was really pissed off at me. But you know what happened? He sent me emails and they were never coming through. I can't respond to an email I never get. You know what I'm saying? Other ways you can support the channel, I am an Amazon affiliate. As an Amazon affiliate, I earn on all qualified purchases, so help support this thick boy. You can do one-time PayPal donations. You can also become a supporter on patreon.com. I have links in the description box below. The other thing, I'm also an affiliate of Offshore I'm also an affiliate of Offshore Cheap Meds. The reason I am is because I personally have a bunch of crap wrong with me. I'm like the oldest 45 year old alive and I needed some very cheap medication. Uh, it was not covered by my insurance and so I had to buy it elsewhere. If I were to buy it locally cash, it was extremely expensive. The doctor suggested another place. I just picked these guys randomly and they've been great. I've saved a lot of money. So if you have any odd afflictions that are not covered by insurance, and you wanna pay cash for this stuff, I highly recommend them. Check out my affiliate link down below. Now I notice most of my viewers are men, so if you suffer from the man disease of pee, pee soft, they have medication for that. They have all kinds of stuff to, to combat pee, pee soft. <laughs> if you have not yet at this time, please like and subscribe. I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you next time. Thank you. Thank you to anyone watching this video, but an extra special thank you to my top level Patreon supporters and a low level. Thanks buddy to Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, and Mona Swearingen. Thank you and thanks buddy.